Hello, everybody. Welcome to chapel this week. Well, we sure do miss having you around here, but I'm glad we can still do things like this on video to kind of say hello to you and talk about God's Word a little bit. Uh, we'll begin our chapel devotion today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's been really hot lately, right? Have you noticed that? You've been able to still go outside even though we're kind of supposed to stay apart and some stuff isn't open. You go outside and it's really, really super hot. I'm really bad at dealing with hot weather. But just this week, I came up with a great solution. And my problems of being too warm, they're over forever. Here it is. Here's what I figured out. If I just take an ice cube and sort of put it on my face, a little over here, a little over here, forehead oh man it's so nice and cold so when it's like super hot super warm out i just take an ice cube put it on my face problem is solved forever congratulations me on figuring out my problem thank you very much oh hey pastor growth mrs growth hi well hello i was just telling the people of the watching this chapel video that i had this problem of being really too warm and i solved it forever mm. with ice cubes isn't that great? Uh, well, that doesn't seem like a very permanent solution. What, what do you mean? Well, I just feel like the ice cubes, the ice cube will melt. Well, I have a second ice cube in here. But well, what about when the second ice cube melts? I have three ice cubes in here. But what? A, I just feel like that's. What about when your third ice cube melts, Pastor Gross? I hadn't thought that far ahead. Okay, well wait, I have a solution. This could be a permanent fix. What do you have there? You plug it into the wall, it's a fan, and it blows on you. Do you want to try it? I guess I'll try anything. <laughs> Is it working? Mm -hmm. It's not gonna melt, it's gonna keep going. Okay, that's really nice. She's, she's really smart, yeah, ice cubes. Yeah, temporary. It'll make me cool for a little bit, but then they melt. She's right. Thanks, Mrs. Girl. Yeah, the fan is a way better option because the fan will last a lot longer. One of the big ideas in our chapel devotion for today is the things in this world are so short and temporary. I know that's a big word. Temporary just means it won't last forever. Like the ice cube. The ice cube might make me happy for a little while, but the ice cube is going to start to melt. And then it's gone. Then it can't help me at all. The fan is something that will last a lot longer because you can plug it in. Here's our text for today. It's from our second lesson for this coming Sunday. 1 John 2.17 The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. So you see what John is saying there? All the stuff in this world, it'll pass away. It's an ice cube. It's temporary. It's going to melt. But connections to God, God's grace, God's power, His promises... That will last forever. Let's talk a little bit about the first commandment. Do you remember the first commandment if you studied that before? First commandment is, you shall have no other gods. And Martin Luther said, what does that mean? It means to fear, love, and trust in God above everything and anyone else. What does it mean to fear God? Now that's kind of confusing because it sounds at first like we should be afraid of God. Is that what God wants? Should we be afraid of God like we're afraid of the dark or like I'm afraid of sharks? No. When it says fear God, Here's a picture of the Grand Canyon. Now, when you look at the Grand Canyon, it's so big, it's so massive. You just look at it, you think, I can't even fit this whole thing inside my head. It's so giant, it's so beautiful and awesome. I respect it. That's a little bit closer to what God wants for us, is that God is so big and he's so great and so awesome that we fear him. We're not afraid of him. But we recognize he is wonderful and he is the best and biggest thing in our life. What does it mean to love God? That one's a little easier, isn't it? You, you love lots of people. Who, whom do you love? Well, you, you love your parents. You love your grandparents. You maybe give them a hug like the kid in this picture. You love someone. They, they take care of you. And you show your love for them by maybe giving them a hug or telling them literally, I love you. Or maybe you write them a card, you know, Father's Day is coming up, Mother's Day was just last month. You do something to let them know that you love them. So how do we show God that we love him? So fear, love, and then trust. What does it mean to trust God? Do you ever do this? Now this is something you can do as it gets warm, uh, as pools start to open up again. 
Remember, maybe, maybe none of you have jumped into a pool yet, or maybe some of you remember what it was like the first time you had to jump into a pool. And maybe you know, in this picture, there's a mom in the pool. Maybe it was dad, maybe it was grandpa, grandma, or a babysitter. And they were in the pool and they said, jump in, I'll catch you. And you thought to yourself, I don't know about this. This is pretty crazy. I'm just going to launch myself into that pool. And maybe it took a while to convince you to do it, but why did you finally do it? Because you trusted that person in the pool. You trusted that they would love you, they were going to protect you, and they would catch you. So fear, love, and trust in God. Let's talk about some of the temptations we have in fearing, loving, and trusting at something others, other, other things than God. This is a place, if you're watching at home, where you could stop and pause if you want and talk with your siblings or a parent or a grandparent or babysitter. Just stop, stop and think about this. What are the top three things that we fear, love, and trust more than God? How do we break the first commandment? Here are a few for you to consider. The one is, one is money. Money is so much easier to love and trust more than God because we think money gets us stuff. You know, this world needs money. Money maybe makes us feel like we're safe. If I have enough money, I can fight off any problems. I can be at peace and things like that. But who gives us money? God is the one who gives us money. Uh, another one that might be a big deal for you are toys. Is it easier, easy to love toys more than you love God? Because sometimes when you're little, life feels like it's all about toys. The toys that I want that I don't have yet, the toys that my neighbor has, or my sibling has, or my friend at school has, and I don't have those things. I have to have those things. Why won't God let me have those things? It's easier to, easy to fear, love, and trust money and toys more than God. And this one, I think, is one that happens every day. Sin. You have a picture here of two siblings arguing over the remote. Because God, what does God want us to do with our siblings and everyone else? To love each other. So when we sin, what are we telling God? Saying, I don't care about your commands. They're not important. Who are we really worshiping when we sin? We're kind of worshiping ourselves, aren't we? Because God says, don't do this. And we say, hmm, I'm going to do it anyway. We're breaking the first commandment. So money, toys, and sin. Those are things we should really think about and be careful of when it comes to worshiping. As opposed to, here's the last question for today. Why is God better than everything else? You could pause here if you want and talk through it through. Why is God better than everything else? Better than money, better than toys, better than any sin in the whole wide world. Why is he better? Talk about that for a few, few moments here. Why is God better than everything else? That's a pretty easy question for us who believe the Bible, isn't it? Well, first of all, he sent his son to be born. A human being like us, Jesus is our brother. And then that same Jesus grew up and he died on the cross for us. What could be more loving than that? What would be a better place to put our trust in than, than in God? This God who loves us so much, who had a plan for salvation. And finally, what's going to happen after you and I leave this world? We're going to go home to heaven. Is there anything better in this world than heaven will be? No. Big and O. No. Nothing better in this whole world. Not money, not toys, not any sin. Nothing better than God promising us we'll be in heaven with him one day. So there are lots of things in this world that are kind of like these ice cubes, aren't they? They'll make us happy for a little bit, but these are already starting to melt pretty fast. Everything in this world will melt, melt too. But remember the fan that Mrs. Groth brought us. That is something like God's grace that will last, that will make us happy not for a little while, but forever. Let's thank God for that in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the promises you make to us, promises of life forever with you in heaven. Forgive us for the many times we get distracted by things in this earth that only last for a little bit. Make us smarter, wiser, make us more trusting in you. Help us understand that you alone are the one thing that we need, the one thing that will last forever. In your name we pray, amen. All right, we're going to pause here for a second and get ready to sing our hymn for today. Uh, if you have a hymnal at home, it's hymn 422, Jesus Lead Us On. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and Mrs. Groth is going to join me to sing our hymn this week, which again is hymn 422, Jesus Lead Us On. We've got four verses.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. God's blessings to you. We'll see you next week.